What's up, guys? Hey everyone, we're joined by Northwestern head coach Chris Collins. We'll begin with an opening statement, then we'll take questions. Yeah, really good win for us tonight. Um, man, that was a physical game. Um, you know, that was sometimes you get to the second half of the Big Ten, you're starting to see, you know, the uh, the physicality because teams know each other so well and. Um, and and I thought in the first half it really kind of affected how we were playing offense, especially. And then uh, I thought in the second half we really regrouped. You know, our guys um, really got poised in the second half. And I thought our defense was fantastic. You know, to to hold Trace uh, to 13 points on 13 shots, it's pretty good. He's one of the best players in the country. And um, and obviously. We didn't have advance warning, so you all, all of a sudden you have to, you know, kind of adjust to a different lineup, which, you know, you, you obviously they didn't have their main guys, but they still had some pretty good guys out there. And, um, you know, it, we're a little bit fortunate with that, but at the end of the day, you got to play the games. And we've had to play games without Chase. We've had to play games without Pete. And, um, and yet, and you have to figure it out. So um, it was a really good win. I thought our poise down the stretch, we got stops, we made free throws, we didn't turn it over. Um, even when we had possessions where we didn't score, we we worked the clock and and um, just thought our, our poise down the stretch. You know, I'm, I'm sure you guys won't ask me about a close game tonight like you do when we lose. But uh, but but uh, I thought thought it was pretty darn good, uh, our, our end game execution tonight. So I'm open for questions. This question right here. Uh, it's, uh, this is the second game where Bowie's been leading the team in points. Can you just talk about his impact on this team and if he's really become a team leader down the stretch in these games? Yeah, I mean, he, he's a guy, you know, when when uh, when the game's on the line, he's not afraid. You know, he, he wants the ball. And, and I thought not only the shots, he hit the big floater, um, which was huge, but even, like, I thought he made a great find to Ryan Greer, you know, late in the game. You know, I thought he made a great find to Chase where Geronimo made a really good block there at the end of the clock when Pete had the... Um, you know the last second shot that didn't did didn't count, but um, his decision making has gotten a lot better. Um, you know he's he's finding a way to kind of score, and even though he didn't have any assists tonight, I thought he still kind of set the table for our guys. A lot of that had to do with we just didn't shoot the ball well. You know he probably would have had three or four assists. Um, you know five for twenty seven from three. We got to clean that up, but he's playing great. He's playing great. Um, he's playing like an older player, you know. And and you gotta have to have good point guard play if you're gonna win in this league. And um, you know, when he plays like that, we're we're a tough team to play against. I guess I'm um, just uh, from an Indiana standpoint. Kind of, when did you find out about the lineup adjustments again? How did you react or adjust? Yeah, we didn't find out until they put their lineup in. You know, because those guys. I mean, I always, you know, before a game, our guys in street clothes. Our guys, you know, obviously we knew Finnessy was hurt. You know, once you saw he was in street clothes, we knew he wasn't going to play. But all those other guys were out there warming up. So I mean, there was no indication that they weren't going to play. Um, so we really didn't find out until whatever twelve minutes before the game. Um, you know, obviously it changes things a little bit because, uh, you know, Xavier Johnson, some of the things he does, Parker Stewart, um, you know, what he brings to the to the table, some of their bench guys, you know, not having Bates, not having Lander, um, you know, it made their guys log heavy minutes. So we really made a point to try to continue, even though we weren't scoring a lot, we wanted to push the tempo, you know, because we knew those guys were going to have to pay, play a lot of minutes. And um, hopefully fatigue did play a little bit of a factor. But I give them a lot of credit, you know, th those guys that they had out there, they fought, they on the fly. I mean, Galloway's playing point. He played fantastic uh, in a role he never does. You know, Geronimo's out there playing on the wing. He normally doesn't do that. So I give their guys a lot of credit, the guys that did play, because they made it real hard on us to win tonight. Question for the writer. Hey, Coach. Um, tonight, like you mentioned how good your defense played, and I thought especially like on ball screens, you guys seemed really on point, like guarding mm -hmm. all their stuff. Yeah. Do you think, like, just the team took it, like, lock in even extra hard on that with their shots not falling like just were super detailed with that yeah kind of you know I mean it, it it turned into a game where where you saw I mean it was going to be defense and the referee I mean they they did a good job they they were letting guys play you know there was contact on both ends you know they were letting guys play um a lot of banging a lot of holding and and you got to adjust to that and I'll give them credit they were consistent the whole night with that um and and obviously you know early in the game we didn't do a great job I thought Galloway got downhill on us two or three times early um, but then I thought as the game wore on I thought our ball screen defense was very good um, 
and it was just going to be that kind of game. I mean, we got stops in the last two minutes, you know, other than the one time I think Leo drove in and found Race Thompson for a dunk, you know, after we had scored. You know, we got really good st- stops. I mean, the, the biggest stop of the game there was when we were up six. You know, they just disallowed Pete's uh, shot there at the end, and it was 57-51, and I think there was, you know, close to 50 seconds, 50-plus 50 seconds left, and we basically had them have a shot clock violation. You know, did a great job. We talked. We switched. They forced a really – the cop had like an up and under shot, you know, that that missed, and um, and we ate up the clock, and then, you know, we're able to get fouled and make two free throws. So, um, overall, the defense – I mean, we held them to 51 points. So, I mean, the defense was certainly the catalyst for this win. Coach, tonight obviously it was Miller Cobb's return to Edmondson. What were your conversations like with Miller before the game, and what did this mean, win mean to the team considering it was against one of your Yeah, well, the conversations are private. Um, you know, Miller and I have a great history together. You know, I mean, there's not anyone that I've recruited since I've been here uh, harder than Miller because I've loved him from the first time I saw him play, you know, as, as a junior in high school, and that, that stays the same. And I'm forever grateful for the three years he gave us. You know, he came in during a rebuilding time um, with that class, Ryan Young, uh, Ryan Greer, Pete Nance, and he came in together um, on the heels of kind of losing McIntosh and Lindsey and Law and all those guys. And, and, and he was always a guy, he's super competitive, came to work every day, hardworking guy, and that doesn't change, you know? And so it wasn't about him tonight, it was about Indiana. We didn't make it about him at all. It was about guarding Indiana. It was about playing Indiana, beating Indiana. And he'll forever, three years here, man, he'll, he'll forever have a home to me. And uh, obviously I wish him nothing but the best. Coach, we saw a lot of Ryan Young and Pete Nance on the floor uh, together. Was that kind of a, a game plan uh, to go up against Thompson and Jackson? Before? Yeah, it was matchup driven. You know, we want, we wanted to keep bodies on those guys all night, whether it was Elijah, whether it was Robbie, and then kind of to close the game, we went with Ryan and, and Pete. You know, just because they play those two traditional big guys, and I just felt having those guys on the floor. It was such a defensive game. You know that I felt like we needed that that size on the floor and the physicality there at the end to to try to match up with those two kids. Over here, uh, coach, you kind of subbed um, Greer for Bowie right at that like 16 minute mark, and then yeah. he had the three point burst. Can you just speak to his kind of production right there, how important that was, and then his late game production too? About Bowie's? Uh, about Greer? Yeah, Greer's been fantastic, guys. You know, Greer's really been a steadying force for us. You know, what we found too is it allows us to get Boo off the ball a little bit. You know, those guys can play together. Um, it allows Greer to bring the ball up the floor. He's so steady. He knows what we want to get into. And then I can utilize Boo coming off screens, bringing him out of the corner on dribble handoffs and coming off pin downs and things like that and, and take away some of his energy maybe from bringing the ball up the floor. And it kind of gives teams a different look, you know. And so, you know, I, I just think our bench in general, you know, I, I think it's a real underrated part of our team. You know, when when you can bring in Ryan Greer, Ty Berry, Elijah Williams, and Ryan Young, you know, to me that that you bring in guys, they come in for starters who are tired, but you bring in starting level players. I mean, I thought I believe those guys are like starters, and I think it's one of the reasons why we're playing well is we kind of have found a rotation now with those nine guys, um, and they're all kind of doing a great job in their roles. Question all the back there. Yeah, coach. So Pete was struggling to score tonight, but. Ended with 11 rebounds. What does he do outside of scoring that really helps his team? Well, his defensive rebounding tonight, you know, nine defensive rebounds. You know, I thought he got some big time ones in the second half, you know, where there's multiple bodies and he just goes up in traffic and gets them. Um, Certainly his passing and his skill set. You know, we play a lot through him, through the high post, his ability to find cutters, space the floor. You know, the shot wasn't going tonight, but what I was proud of him is he just kept playing in other areas. And for him to walk up and make two big free throws there on that hook and hold, I mean, that was huge. You know, Ryan Young made two one, two big ones, he made two big ones, and then Greer made two big ones at the end. We were six for six at the line. So just as steadying, he's a, he's a senior. You know, he's a fourth-year guy. He's played in a lot of games. His ability to break the press. You know, you saw in the last minute, he can inbound the ball, he can handle the ball, he can get it up the floor. I mean, those those are all things that make him very unique for his size. And how has he changed more as a leader as well? Yeah, I mean, it's been night and day. I mean, I, it, I've i told him privately, and I'll, I'll say publicly, uh, you know, the transformation from where he was as a freshman, you know, and, and maybe not a great body language guy, you know, maybe not, you know, and, and turning into our most positive guy and one of our most outspoken guys and a big time leader. I mean, he and Greer, since, since our season ended last year, you know, I'll give those guys a lot of credit. 
you know, they're in today's day and age, you have a year kind of like that where you endure a 13 game losing streak, you know, in the middle <laughs> sandwich between two, three game, you know, streaks. But, you know, a year where everybody's kind of disappointed in today's day and age where it's easy to kind of just say, you know what, I'm going to try to find it somewhere else. Um, those guys kept the group together. You know, which which has been great, you know, and since the spring we we've and that's why I'm just happy to see these guys rewarded that more than anything. Not about me. Those tough losses in the first half of the conference is because of these guys and the investment they've made. They deserved better. And I'm so glad that they've stayed the course and continued to fight. And now they have some wins to show for it. And we've put ourselves in a position now with seven games. They're going to be tough games, but we've put ourselves in position with seven games to play meaningful games. And, you know, that's what we wanted to do in mid-February, early March. And, and now we have that opportunity. Yeah, Coach, sorry, you may have already been asked this. I came in late, but when did you find out about what was going on with Indiana's roster? Yeah, as that? soon as they had to put in the starting lineups because those guys were out there warming up. You know, so we always say as anybody, you know, as coaching staff, is anybody on street clothes? Is anybody out? And all their guys were out there. So, you know, we anticipated them having their full roster. And we didn't know until they put the lineup in. And then we kind of heard rumblings that they were going to be out. You know, but I'm not on it. But the power for power of social media, you know, with, with grad assistance and stuff, kind of were able to see what was announced. And um, we just had to adjust on the fly. And, uh, well, I mean, it did. It did not um, be, because, you know, it took away, obviously, Xavier Johnson, Parker Stewart, Tamar Bates, Lander, you know, four of their athletic kind of guard wing type players. And it kind of made us – I knew that they were going to not have a lot of depth. So the, the main thing we talked about was just because we play nine guys and we, you know, really Boo was the only guy who played over 30 minutes. So we wanted to keep fresh guys in there and hope over the course of the game, knowing that they were going to have to go heavy minutes, that maybe fatigue would set in there the last 10 minutes of the game. Coach, you um, kind of talked about the drafts that the offense had, but also the runs that um, you guys went on. So could you talk about, of course, the defense um, was stellar, but what kind of let the offense go on these runs or get things going? Yeah, I just think sometimes when you throw yourself into competition, you, you forget about missing shots. You know, you, you're thinking about winning. You're thinking about getting a loose ball. You're thinking about – and then all of a sudden when the shot comes and, – and then I thought we took better shots, you know, in the first half. You know, I thought their kind of pressure, their physicality kind of forced us into some bad ones. I thought we made some bad decisions. They were doing a lot of switching. You know, I thought we were settling for long threes against their switching with guards against bigs instead of driving the ball, instead of hitting the post, you know, against their wing players. And we tried to do a better job of that in the second half. I thought we did. We got some better shots. And, uh, you know, Chase saw the ball go in a little bit. Um, you know, Boo hit a big three there right in front of our bench. Um, and... You know, we found enough. We we found a way. Robbie hit a big three there during that stretch. We found a way to get enough points to to hold them off. Coach, I know you already got asked about Ryan Greer, but like, um, I was just think about how previous years of a lot of people's biggest reserves of him is that he wasn't the most willing shooter, seemed a little mm -hmm. passive at times, and then now you see like he takes a big step back over. Yeah, like, dude, he's a lot taller than him. Like, yeah. what can you talk about, like? Maybe not his confidence changes, maybe he's always been like that, but just to see it on the court where it's like, it seems like a guy who more and more feels like he can go out and get buckets. Like yeah. Hasn't no, been doing that it's years. awesome, man. You know, I'm so proud of Ryan. Um, you know, he came in, you know, we, we kind of had recruited him to be a year after he came in. You know, he came in early, didn't play much, you know, when he was younger, kind of always, you know, had that little part of him that always like kind of wanted to play safe, you know, and, and he and I have had conversations about just going out there and, and hooping, you know, for lack of a better term, you know, like be aggressive, be feisty, you know, drive the ball, get in there, make plays. You got a big shot, take it with confidence. And, you know, it's, it's fun a lot of times when you see kind of players become the player that you envision them becoming when you saw him as a young player and, and he's done just that and give him a lot of credit, give our coaching staff for his development. It's just fun to see his confidence right now to the point where, you know, we got to have him on the floor at the end of the game. He makes free throws. He takes care of the ball. He's a good defender. You know, he's become such an invaluable piece to our team. I want to ask you about a close game, but I'll break the seal. Um, <laughs> do you think it's easier coming off two wins for like Greer or Pete to hit late free throws and get a stop? Do you think it's easier coming sure. off two wins rather than Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, guys, everybody, the human human brain and, and the power of the mind and human nature, you know, you 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 kind of live through your your setbacks and your and your triumphs. 
and you know for our guys that's why I thought even though we didn't like the way it happened I thought the Rutgers game was huge even though we let the big lead go for us to lose momentum uh, from a 24 point lead have them score on the last second to force overtime have all the momentum have all those kind of demons of close games pass for our guys to win that game in overtime it was almost better than had we won by 20 to be quite honest and because they saw like we can do this you know we got some stops late we did what we had to do we won that game we played very well at Nebraska on Saturday and 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 momentum is big you know like you see a lot with teams you know you you find a momentum you find a groove your confidence is high and um you know guys want to keep playing which is which is exciting this time of year any more questions yeah, um, Northwestern had a really big advantage rebounding tonight. What do you think really got into the team and helped them really dominate on the boards? Yeah, you know what, guys? Kind of quietly, we've been a very good offensive rebounding team. You know, you look at kind of our numbers on the year and, and you look at times our girth, maybe because you see a Robbie or a Pete or, you know, Boo and Greer and those guys out there. But, you know, what Chase is a, a really good offensive rebounder. Julian Roper, you know, is a guy who gets in there and, and grabs some O boards. You know, Pete and Robbie and Ryan Young. And collectively, we that's been a real strong suit of our team. You know, so on a night like tonight where a lot of shots were missed, you know, to be able to go in there and get some extra possessions, I mean, again, we had 15 more shots at the basket. You know, that, that's a big deal. You know, you, you guys who, who follow the numbers game, you know, in, in a 50-point game, if you have 15 more shots at the basket on a team, um, it's going to be a pretty good advantage for you. And I thought that certainly helped. Last question for the front. Uh, you got five days before the rematch against Illinois. Is there anything you're going to take from this game that you're going to work on in practice just for the coming days? Yeah, I mean, it, it gives our guys a time. You know, we've had a tough stretch with a lot of games. We really haven't had a lot of days off. You know, we've played kind of every third day here for the last two weeks or close to a month. Uh, it's going to be nice. They're going to have a chance to kind of get their legs, get get their bodies right. Um, we just played Illinois, so I think there'll be a familiarity level with both teams, having just played them last weekend. But um, they're a heck of a team, you know, and, and, and obviously they present some things with Kofi and with those guards, and, and it's a really tough place to play in Champaign. But I think our guys are excited about the opportunity and the challenge, and, and we'll go in there with confidence and, um, and give it our best shot and see what we can do. Just one final question from up here. What does it mean to honor Billy McKinney oh, uh, yeah. during the game? What does he mean to you? What does he mean to the program in Northwestern? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. I uh, appreciate you asking, and I probably should have brought it up. You know, for us, you know, with this month being Black History Month, you know, it was really important for us as a program, you know, to to use that to honor, you know, a former player, former players that have not only been trailblazers as players, but also as men, you know, because at the end of the day, that's what we want to do here. We want to develop these guys as men. We want them to be outstanding players. And to have a guy like Billy McKinney, you know, comes from Zion Benton, African-American guy comes in here, trailblazer as a player, probably, in my opinion, probably the best player to ever play here, NBA career, um, goes on to a great career in, in the front office in the NBA, was a general manager, and now is the mayor of his town, of Zion Benton. And there's no better... You know, uh, there's no better guy to represent our program than Billy. He's doing our radio now. And you see the emo when you talk to him about this program, the emotion in his eyes gives gets me emotional. How much he cares about this place, how much he knows that the people at this pl at Northwestern impacted his life in so many ways, and how he wants that for our players. So it was a no-brainer for us tonight to, to, to honor him in that way. I wish we could do more. You know, I, I want to get his number in the rafters one of these days. You know, that's, that's one, of my, one of my goals. I think he deserves it. And um, just a great, great guy and a great representative of our program. And before I get out of here, students were amazing. You know, students were amazing. And we need it, guys. Like, we, we need it. Everywhere we go, that's what we face. And for the students to come out tonight – and to cheer the way they did, to to be into the game the way they did, it, it got us through. And some of these atmospheres, we got to, you know, we'll be back next week playing Purdue and just encourage to hopefully they're having fun. We got a fun group to follow. These guys work their butts off. They fight their butts off. And when we get that kind of support, it really helps us. So want to shout out to the students for coming tonight. Thank you, guys.
Huh? We'll come after. Oh, all right. <coughs> so, all right, we're going by Boo Booey. We'll start with questions from the media. In the front row. Uh, Boo, it looked like you had an interaction with Coach Woodson after the game. Do you mind telling us what you guys were talking about just after that uh, hard fought game? With who? Coach Woodson? Yeah. No, no, I remember. I know who. I know who Coach Woodson. I don't remember talking to him. <laughs> I don't remember talking to him at the end, honestly. I don't think I did. Uh, yeah. Next question. <laughs> uh, it seemed like you missed a couple of three short. Were you just a little tired out there? You play a lot of games in uh, the days. Uh. You know, I mean, I missed a couple of them short. Uh, I just think it had to do with some of my balance. And uh, on some of them, I was a little deep. I could have got a, a little bit closer to the line. And, uh, you know, maybe those would have went in. Question in the middle. Uh, you were really getting downhill off of the triple handoff. Was that kind of the goal from the jump or to, like, kind of attack Indiana's depth? Or you just always try to look for that in games? I mean, yeah, my goal is to always try to get two feet in the paint. Uh, when I get the ball, like on the ball screen or handoff, uh, it's for me to get downhill and uh, make a play. So that's what my goal is every time, whether that's getting all the way to the rim or, you know, kicking and finding an open guy. Question the back, right? Um, on that big floater that you had that pretty much like put the game away towards the end, I think I saw you hit your defender at the two small celebration on that one. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, is that one you've broken out a lot before? Cause that, it's the first time I remember seeing you do it. Uh, you know, that was just, I'm just a very passionate player, so I was just celebrating in the moment. Uh, I made a good move, got to my jump stop, bumped them off, you know, made the little float. Celebrated. Question in the middle? Yeah, um, after one of your big buckets to really close out the game, you were absolutely hyped up. What was going through your mind as you sealed this win? Yeah, I mean, I was hyped up just – Obviously, all the, uh, I'm a junior now, so just all these years, over the years, man, like winning in this league is hard, as everybody knows. So when you go out there and, and you win around, you know, you got to celebrate. How did you find out about um, all of Indiana's uh, lineup adjustments, and how did you personally kind of adjust to that? Uh, I didn't have it. I didn't have, like, an idea of what was going on uh, until before the game started. They changed my matchup. Uh, I wasn't. I still didn't know what. I still don't know what happened. Uh, but after about, I mean, after the first half, and no, they like didn't sub anyone. Then I knew something was up. So I'm like, yeah, these guys aren't playing. Uh, but we weren't really too focused about that. Like I said, we didn't really know. You know, we were just coming out uh, ready to play them as a full team. Uh, so that's what we did. And you, you talked about your offensive game already. Could you talk about how important the defensive team effort was in this game? Yeah, I mean, defense was really important. Uh, we, uh, we, we were really struggling in the first half offensively, shooting from the field. Uh, second half was a little bit better, but still even the whole, the whole game really came down to our defense. Uh, it was like a, what was the final? It was in the 60s. Uh, you know, we've we've been a team who've been putting up uh, more than that uh, most games. So, uh, you know, when you're not making those shots, the defense is really, really how you're going to win those games. Question in the back. Um, How did the atmosphere with the students and everything help you guys out tonight? The students are great. Uh, I think that's what makes me uh, even more passionate. You know, if it was an empty building and I do something and there's no noise after, then it might not be as exciting. Uh, but the... The wild side is definitely there in effect, uh, helping us a lot. Uh, we need them every game. Time for a couple more questions. Right over there. Uh, your old teammate, Miller Cop, obviously, is on Indiana. Now, what was it like just to see him again? Was it weird to see him wearing the other jersey kind of thing? I mean, yeah, it was weird. So, I didn't really come in with Miller. I'm a, a year younger. So, the, the guys older than me uh, had a, a better connection. Uh, Miller's cool. Uh, but it was just weird seeing him in red, honestly, like just on another team, like about to, like I played against him millions of times, but you know, just seeing him like in person, like, cause hearing about him transferring and going somewhere is different than actually seeing him on the court, like playing against him. Uh, you know, you used to be trying to build with him, but now you're, you're trying to defend him and play against him. Uh, and we actually were able to do a pretty good job on him tonight. Uh, yeah, wish him the best of luck.
Time for one more question in the middle. Um, so this is three and our wins. What kind of boost does that give you going into Illinois? I mean, yeah, you know, we're just taking one game at a time. Uh, so we're going to come back. Off, uh, we have an off day tomorrow, but we're going to come back after that, prepare for, for Illinois on the road. Uh, you know, they're a tough team, but uh, they're beatable. Wrap us up. Thanks, Bill. Thanks. We're going to chase our